So in this uh, video, we're going to write off an uncollectible account. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, QuickBooks is meant for a non-accountant end user for the most part. However, accountants obviously can use it, but it really um, designed its write-off for bad for uncollectible accounts in the direct write-off method, which really is not GAP preferred. So we're going to have to kind of trick that. So if you use the QuickBooks method as they designed it, you would write off directly to bad debt expense. But as you know, that doesn't necessarily match the sale with the estimate of bad debt. So we want to actually, uh, first of all, do an accrual, which can be done through just a standard journal entry, but then do the write off of the account uh, a little bit different. So we're going to kind of trick it. What we need to do is create a new account. So I'm going to go to chart of accounts and I'm creating a new account. And this one we are going to set up as other current asset. So I'm going to go to other accounts types and select that. We would normally want to set it up as an accounts receivable, but QuickBooks only lets you have one accounts receivable account. So we're going to put it under other current asset and it kind of is coincidentally that it just happens to fall right underneath accounts receivable. All right. So we're going to call this allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. And we can't make it a sub account. Uh, we'll go ahead and just save and close. All right. So kind of the funny thing about uncollectible accounts, how you record them is through receiving a payment. So I'm going to go to receive payment. And this is going to be Chris Baker, who's unable to pay us, and he still owes 1040. So what we're going to do is go up to discounts and credits, and I'm going to put in that amount, 1040. We don't want to go to discounts given, but now we go ahead and look for um, our other current asset allowance for doubtful accounts, and we select that. Go ahead and done and go ahead and save and close. If we go ahead and look at Chris Baker here in customers, we can see that uh, it did write it off uh, with the, it looks like a discount here, but if you look at the entry, actually let's go to the journal, let's go to reports, accountants and taxes and go to the journal. We can go to the very bottom and you can see that it went to accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so sometimes we actually receive cash in a variety of different ways. So there's a couple different ways we can do it. So let's say we're recording interest. Now we don't want to temporarily put that in undeposited funds. We can actually put that directly into the checking account because that's what the bank actually does. So the easiest way to do this is if we go to accountant and just make a general journal entry. All right, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. I tend to like that. It's a personal preference. And so we're going to go to our checking account and we received $500 of interest. And so we're going to go to the next line and we're going to just say interest. And of course we don't accidentally want to put expense. We want income. So now we've increased the balance in our checking account and we've recorded cash automatically. Let's do an entry for if we received a check and we did, we want to deposit it later. So let's go once again to accountant and make general journal entry. And this time we're going to go to undeposited funds and I didn't mean to put in the date there. I accidentally started to type something wrong. So let's just start over there. I'm going to keep the date undeposited funds. And this time we received a check for 800 and we're going to go to other income. So I'm looking for um, just some other miscellaneous income on categories income that will work for now. Um, all right. And we'll go ahead and save it close. The last way to do this is if you get a check at the same time, you're going to make a deposit rather than putting an entry. 
what you can do is cancel out of this screen by after going to make deposit and you received it from a bank. So I'm going to say great statewide bank. It's a notes payable. So we're receiving some uh, check for a loan and we're receiving his cash and we received a good loan of $50,000. So that is going to go straight into checking. So that's going to debit checking and credit our notes payable. You might want to keep note of this for your project uh, that we do in our class. All right, I'm going to save and close. Let's just look at I, the check register. And we can see that we have our interest income. Here's our interest income. And somewhere in here, we also have our $50,000. Here's our $50,000 right there. All right, so that really concludes what we're going to talk about for the revenue cycle.